uh, conducting a uh, one to one fireside chat with David, after which you will have a small Q and A session. Please put your questions on the chat box and I will accordingly uh, spell it out for David to get his revert back. So we begin the formal session. Uh, I would request everyone to kindly switch off their videos uh, for better reception uh, eventually. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Amtoy Dialogue Series 1, Session 7, and today's topic, Business Beyond Borders. I would not like to describe our speaker today as a guest, but rather as an old friend of Amtoy. And not only is he our friend, but a friend of the entire global logistics fraternity. He's a people's man, humble and grounded, despite his immense success. He's 68 years young, as he rightfully describes himself, with one marriage and two kids, which is itself an achievement in today's day and age. He's the founder and CEO of Freight Systems in 1988 with a global headquarters in Dubai, offices in 20 countries, founding member and immediate past president of the National Association of Freight Forwarders and Logistics in the UAE, vice president of FIATA, and currently chairman of Rame, Region, Africa, and Middle East. Member of the Dubai Cargo Board, member of the Maritime Advisory Council, UAE, member of the Logistics Advisory Council under His Excellency, the Minister of Economy in the UAE. Passionate about the next generation and speaker and mentor for Dubai Finance in their Young Business Leaders Program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Phillips to today's session. Hi, David. You can unmute yourself now, I guess. Can you? It will just, I've sent you the request. I think it will just click on the. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There, there we go. There you, there you. Thank you. Thank you, Xerxes. Uh, uh, namaskar to everybody. And uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be, uh, to be on your show. Uh, yes. You guys are all very dear, uh, dear to me. I have a lot of very good friends uh, in Amtoy and in India, in the fraternity and the industry. And uh, I am uh, honored and humbled to be to be uh, here. And I, I hope I can give you an insight into some of the questions you ask and thereby an insight into into me. Thanks, David. I'm sure it will be a very invigorating session. You've always been very interesting whenever you've joined us. <laughs> uh, so I'll start straight off the grid. Uh, you are the founder and CEO of Freight Systems, which is an iconic organization in today's uh, AR industry today. And I recall us having off, uh, casual chats on how it all started with you, which was very interesting. And I would like you to share it with our fellow viewers today, how you started Freight Systems, which if I recall correctly, it was almost by default. And uh, you were also a pioneer in the LCL cargo segment, one of the few who really started this new concept at that time. So really, please go ahead and share this story with us. So it's an interesting story. So I used to work for a, a, a local uh, company in Dubai. I came here in, in 81. Until uh, 88, I was working as the general manager of a shipping company. And uh, I had a very small profit share based upon earnings. Uh, and uh, my profits, we used to make money. So I had some share coming to me, but it was never credited to my account. Always to my bank, always to my account. So I one day went to my boss and I said, you know, can I have that money, please? You know, can you please give me the money? I have two little kids now, you know, I don't have any other savings. And I did come to Dubai to make money. So can I have it? He said, David, don't worry, it's in your account. I said, yeah, but not in my bank account. But short, long story short, I realized that I was not going to get paid. So I said, I have to do something different. And I decided that resigning would probably get me my check. So I went to him and I said, you know, I think we've had a good run. I think I should look for new avenues and new horizons. And I would like to pursue a new a, a new future beyond beyond this company. And he turned on and said, I think it's a wonderful idea. So, so my strategy, you know, obviously my bombed, time. and I was still without my money. So I found myself without a job from one day to the next. 
But did you get paid? No, I did not. Oh, wow. But, you know, life goes hmm. on. But so that sort of, in, in hindsight, I'm happy I did it at that time, right? And not okay. 10 years beyond that, because then there would be, I would be 10 years older and not able to take any risks that I did take when I started Freight Systems. So that was one of the, the, the reasons for me to start Freight Systems, though I never thought that I would start a company. I thought, let me find another job. And I had you know, a few companies offering me positions. Uh, but then one of my old contacts that I was doing business in the company came to me and said, listen, we are doing too much of stuff together and I can't stop it. So you need to continue to do it with me. And he actually, this was Castrol, the big company Castrol. And they gave us the platform on which to launch our company. So the, the, the lesson I learned there is about relationships. And, and uh, it was purely a relationship that made me think about starting a company. And if you, if any of you guys know a little bit about, you know, uh, uh, the, the Christian community, we love working for people. That's so, true. Very yeah, few to so show. It's very, it's, it's not, it's not in our DNA, right? We like to work for people and, you know, it's that, that's it's what like, it's good, which is not a bad thing also. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. But, you know, once in a while I come, you come across a guy like me that, unfortunately work for someone that didn't appreciate people and therefore i was kind of forced into looking at options and one of the options was to start a company and uh, that's that's what i did and uh, i had a lot of luck that you know allows me to be where i am today uh, hard work is, is is a given everybody works hard but i think you need a lot of luck or at least some Very luck to 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 you not know make that problem. difference yeah not taking anything away from you but it plays a very big role a huge role Two. absolutely i mean come on castro mm. didn't have to do anything for me he said but, you're but, the only person i know we can't stop what we are doing tell me what you want here are two tickets fly into the uk sign a deal and we'll make it happen for you that was it wow nowadays no one pays tickets even in today's day and age also <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah, 33 years ago. Yeah. 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 So, so you, you started with Freight Systems. You had two partners as well, if I recall correctly. Well, and... I, I had my, the, my boss in, my, in the company that I worked for was a dear person, a very good friend who now is no more, called uh, 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 Meenu Minwala. So I had, I, had, I had two partners, Meenu Minwala and Mickey Bambo, Parsis. Both Parsis from Pakistan. Wow. But my dearest friends, okay? Minu was my boss. In my earlier company, he was my boss. And when he had a heart problem and decided to go back to the U.S. and live in the U.S., I got his job. And then uh, he uh, went into the U.S. And, and started a glass and aluminum factory of which he had no idea. And he lost all his money. And everything. And then he was returning back to go back to Pakistan and he was transiting via Dubai. And he came and he was staying with us for a few days. And I, I, I he says, David, I'm, I'm over and done. I've lost everything. I said, Mike, I don't have a job also. <laughs> we should call him Mike. But this is what is happening with, with, with Castrol. He says, if it works out, you know, we can then start doing some ship agency and would you, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to come back. So. He became my partner, a minority partner, along with Mickey Bambo. Mickey Bambo was Mr. Moneybags. He put in all the money that we needed. And a lot of it, a lot of our success is due to what he did for us. So uh, I had two partners. And then uh, Mike was 20 years older than I was. Mickey is 15 years older than I am. And... Uh, they both decided that they, at some stage, wanted an exit from the business because Mike had no children. Mickey has one son who's a very big doctor in the U.S. So they said, we want to cash out. And we had an exit plan because of what their requirements are. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, in the month of November 2000, 
and nine uh, uh, in this uh, uh, my Mike passed away and uh, a month before that I had just bought out so within 30 days I had no partners wow. so it was like being an orphan so I told Mickey I said Mickey you can't give up your your office you got to keep coming and he's till date he still comes so he comes to the office you know once a day spends an hour or two looks at all the dirty videos and whatsapp that he gets uh, he, he's a parsi he's, he's 80 years old now i was meeting him with you once i think we Dubai. had dinner together Zerxis. we had dinner yeah, with yeah, him at shana's been. yeah yeah so yeah. he's he's quite good company yeah yeah he's a fun loving guy and he plays golf five days a week even at Great. this age wow so Super. that's the story behind the whole thing and you know so a lot of luck mickey didn't have to bankroll us he just okay. believed in me he didn't have to uh, Mike was just a wonderful human being. Three of us were partners and never had an argument for any single day. You're very fortunate. In today's day and age, these kind of things are really not there. Absolutely. Extremely fortunate in terms of my partners. Extremely fortunate. So, so why LCL? Why LCL? Well, this is amazing because, you know, when we started uh, the freight forwarding part in, in Dubai, at that time, there was a lot of garment exports going from Dubai. And, and uh, there was a quota regime. So if you export it to Europe or USA, India always ran out of their quotas. So it was just beating the system. Goods would come here, get relabeled, and would be shipped out. So a lot of my customers were garment exporters in Dubai. They had factories, but they were exporting much more than they could manufacture. And we were shipping out at times goods to Europe with 10 cubic meters in a container, five cubic meters in a container. And I said, there must be a better way to do this. And then we looked at Rotterdam as the first hub and we said that, you know, can we actually think of putting multiple shipments and you guys distributing? And Rotterdam came and said, they do this all the time. So, you know, uh, 2000, March 2000, uh, 1989, we loaded our first container, 20 foot container to Rotterdam, our, our, our LCL box. And we made, I think, three or $4,000 on that. Wow. And, and we were the only operators of LCL cargo in Dubai. The only for a long, long time. And uh, that was the start of, of, of LCL. LCL in Dubai or LCL as a concept in the industry? Well, it started in Dubai, Xerxes. It started okay. in Dubai, and then the next office, that, the next place we started was India. No and case. guess who was, who was my, who represented me out there? Shashi Kiran Shetty? You are right. Ah. <laughs> he and was today... my first agent. Shashi oh. was my first agent. And uh, oh. when, when my son joined, uh, John joined the business, I went and had lunch with him to introduce John to him. And he says, you know, your dad taught me this business. And yes. I said, John, look where he is and look where I am. <laughs> Both success stories in their own way. But this is how Absolutely. This is the rest Absolutely. is history. The rest is history. That's Super. right. That's right. That's right. Stayed out of the movies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that way. So now I, I, I think uh, Freight Systems has um, uh, got, um, uh, I mean, you know, 20 offices spread across the world and several other activities are there, multi various activities. How do you keep track of all these activities and offices and everything? I mean, it's a very large empire today for a single private owner. Well, you know, if you, if you decide to micromanage, it is impossible. And, and this is where, uh, this is what I actually learned from my earlier experience with my earlier company, that uh, uh, it's all about people. It's all about people. Yeah. You can have the, the best operating system uh, running for you, but those are enablers. The, the, real, the real asset behind everything are people. And, uh, How do you retain so, talent? How do you retain? Because today, the retaining talent is one of the biggest challenges in our industry. Good absolutely, people. Absolutely, and it will continue to be the biggest challenge. So you how do you manage that? that? Well, you, you have to create an environment. This is, again, something I learned from my earlier company, that it was an environment that was not very friendly. It was an environment that you had a lot of people looking for jobs. So if you create an environment that, that allows people to be who they are 
And uh, I can walk into any one of my offices in 20 countries and I can tell you whether it is a well-run operation or, or not a well-run operation simply by looking at the people's faces. And I can tell you whether it's a happy environment or we have an asshole of a boss out there. So next time you're in India, you have to come to my office first to let me know what's the real truth. Well, I can see it on your face. You don't have to. Well, Parsis don't have the ability to make people unhappy. No, no, you'll be surprised. <laughs> no, but that is, truly, that is truly what it is. It's about people and trusting people. Yeah. And when you trust people, you could communicate with them that you trust them. And not only in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, stealing from you and trusting them for the intelligence, trusting them that they have a brain, trusting them that they will deliver on what they say. Trusting them, they have the ability to deliver. And they will most often deliver more than you expect. But telling them that you expect that and you trust them to do it is makes a difference. It's, it's the key. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but then, uh, uh, it, it, and you know, David, I've noticed you're very relaxed for a person with such a big empire always, not stressed out, and you're not very running helter-skelter trying to keep things, which is most cases I see of big successful businessmen, the people barely have time to even look up from their table. So that's you attribute it purely. You're a macro manager, not a micro one at all. I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, so you just have good people working for you and good systems in place to ensure that things are run efficiently and well. As efficiently. You now you can imagine that you know, yeah, twenty countries, fifty offices sounds big. All that. Yes, maybe it's big, uh, but that doesn't mean all twenty countries run perfectly, Zerxis. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have my, my my share of problems. I do. I have better, I have things happening more positive than negative. And that's Good. what I think of that. Everything is not going to be perfect. Are you average it out? Right? We don't live in a perfect world. Then you'd be. As I a mean, state I'd, like I'd, I'd go crazy if I wanted to, to, to make everything perfect. You know, I only have only one request for all of them. Please don't lose money for me. That's all. <laughs> That itself is a challenge nowadays, but yeah, that, it's that's challenge. it's a challenge, but you know, we all it's, we have an open communication. We talk it's, it's, it's an environment. I try to create an environment of innovation and fun. I don't want anyone to be scared. I want people to, to have the freedom to think. And, and, uh, if, if you have an idea, don't feel afraid to tell us about the idea. Uh, it may not work, but you know, it starts with an idea. True. So now you've been around for now since 1989. You must have had several heart stopping moments in your career. Define one really dangerous time. I ask this question every dialogue of mine. But define one really time when near sort of where everything was really looking bleak and dangerous. In you your... mean from, from, from a business perspective? Yes, yes, totally business perspective. You know, the, the, uh, the only time that uh, was very early in our life and i i think that any organization uh the first four years is critical because that was my experience the first four years and uh it was uh, the only time that we got concerned uh was when we suddenly realized we don't have enough money in our bank we have a wonderful pnl account every month that says we are making money but that money wasn't sitting in our bank account. It was sitting in somebody else's bank account. We are sitting with our customers. We had not selected something. Our cash flow, we did not know what to do. And this is when I say that, you know, I'm indebted to Mickey Bambot because he's a chartered accountant. He came in from day one and said, I am not going to work, David. I'm going to be playing golf. But I will keep an eye on the accounts. And I said, Mickey, you didn't keep an eye on the accounts. We have no money in the account. And he says, because you're not fucking collecting your goods, your money. Sorry for the French. No, but that's how he would speak. Yes. That's how he does speak even today. Yeah. In, in much more, a lot more adjectives, let me tell you. And then I said, Mickey, what do we need to do? He said, David, you have to collect your money. But in the meantime, let me make sure that we have money to pay our bills. But do not get back into the situation. So that was a learning curve where at one time I said, oh, gosh, if Mickey doesn't look after us, we're going to be, we're dead. You yeah. don't have enough money. So, uh, cash flow, cash flow and cash flow. Cash flow. Uh, it's great doing a lot of business, but 
But good business is only when you get paid for it. Show me the money. That's how this is. Show me the money in my account. Yeah, true. And 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 what has been your most defining moment, like a landmark thing in freight systems history? I think a I, defining moment for me uh, in in uh, I knew that we had a good business model. Uh, what I did not know was uh, how sustainable is it, and uh, our business we build sustainable models, our products are sustainable, but can it stand the test of time? David Phillips is going to get old. David is sixty eight years old today, and and do I have a, a, a sustainable model going forward, or do I have to sell the company? So a defining for me was. Uh, my son John was a very successful options trader in the U.S. after he graduated from college in the U.S. and loved doing what he's doing. Uh, till one day he says, "Dad, I think I want to, you know, take a part of the business. And I think I'll come back." So to me, that was defining to the extent that it started me to think that, "Wow, I can now build sustainability into this business." I can start yes. thinking about the next 40 years of doing things that will actually, you know, has the, the luxury of time to fructify, to come out, because I have someone who's going to take it over. And, and at the end of the day, why do we do everything? We do it for our families, right? Absolutely. So I am extremely fortunate that both my kids are in the business and both have come back to Dubai their own free will. Wow, that's really something to convince them to give up their cushy life and jobs relatively su very successfully. A successful jobs is a testimony. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have to convince them. It was their call. I, I said, I only have one condition. And that is you guys need to be happy. Correct. You have one life. Do things that make you happy. Get up each morning, say I'm happy. And if you can find that and in, that includes your personal life, your professional life, every, every aspect of your life. There's certain things that you have to get up and say, I'm a happy person. Very true. Go of that formula because you only have one life and it goes by very, very quickly. Very quickly, very quickly. So coming to my next question, David, you, you know, I mean, our industry is going through a real revolution, which is, is not seen in the last hundred years or so of digitization and automization. And a lot of things are going to change. We were perhaps when I also joined around 20 years ago or whatever, we've been uh, we were the last people to really become tech savvy. Our industry was the slowest. Emails came in much after they had come in. Yeah. But the recent last five years, we are seeing it being turned upside down completely. Yeah. I know that yeah. you run a very successful IT company for the industry. How do you foresee tech is going to play a role for our, for our business? And how is your company playing a role in assisting the various stakeholders to change their business model, which has always been a very traditional brick and mortar business largely. So, you know, this is uh, another business that, you know, I, I didn't plan to, to be in. It, it, it happened as a result of uh, some consequences. And uh, uh, when I got into it, I realized, I did realize very early that automation would form part of the future. But uh, 30 years ago, I didn't know what that meant. Uh, I don't think the the uh, the software industry or the or, or the automation industry knew enough of our industry to know what we need. So, so when we when we started this the the software business or the uh, making trying to create automation in our industry, uh, we were helped immensely by the fact that our industry had not yet embraced technology. And the industry was headed by people who were 50 years and older and who were shy of technology. I'm talking 20 years ago. Yeah, it's true. completely different today. But the fact that our industry hadn't embraced technology helped technology get into our industry quicker than normal. And it has accelerated during COVID. A tremendous. You go home and work from home. Everybody sat up and said, do I have the ability to talk to my customer, deliver the service I promised him from a position that a place that is geography and time blind? And if I do not have an operating system that allows me to do that, I am going to lose business or I'm not 
going to satisfy my customers. So that I think accelerated the push into technology or digitalization for our industry. And, and I think if you ask any company today, what is the one word that stands out as a result of, you know, the last 12 months of COVID uh, probably is uh, digitalization. Digitalized. The speed at which it has happened and it has been, you know, accelerated because, I mean, you've seen uh, uh, very quiet authorities jump up and run. True. But do you foresee that this post the pandemic as and when it ends, do you foresee that this kind of pace will be continuing for digitization in our industry? Cannot stop. Cannot, cannot stop. stop. It, it, it cannot stop. It has created an awareness within our industry that has allowed people to, uh, to, to really look at the model on how they do business. I, I mean, some of us are never going back to office full time ever. Yeah. There are days in which I find myself more productive at home. And there are days when I find myself more productive in office. There are days when I miss my colleagues, but there are days I don't want to see my colleagues. I just want eight hours of quiet time to work and deliver service and deliver a value. Technology allows me to do that today. Very as true. if I was in my office, as if I was anywhere. True. You can be anywhere. You can travel. You, can't you, stop can... it. you cannot stop it. It's not going to stop. True. So, dear, pre-pandemic times, you were a big globetrotter, I know. You used to live out of a suitcase. The airlines were happy that you were flying. They made good money out of you. How did you manage it? How do you manage that jet-setting lifestyle? And you know, keeping track, you were in one time zone at one time, the other time zone. You were traveling fifteen to twenty days a month, I think, largely. Well, for a not, not once. Once the kids came in, they took a, took on a lot of the travel. But uh, you I'm know, coming I, to that. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, when when you, I mean, human beings are human beings, right? When we don't have an option, we adapt to that environment very quickly. And uh, the very fact, look at what we're doing right now. We are on something called WebEx that allows us to communicate and get our business done. Today's business is about knowing who David is. We're going to do that very efficiently. WebEx, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, we have to embrace that with, and really embrace that and make and sure our business got done. Yeah, and overnight, so I mean, and overnight, so see, today, today we are looking at a situation where we are, we are absolutely questioning the need for traveling to offices to discuss budgets. Yeah. We are not going to do that. We're going to spend as much time as we need on screens, sharing, look, seeing each other, maybe digitally, but doing our business as efficiently as if we were sitting across the table. True. True, but do you see? I mean, uh, are you? Do you see yourself traveling again the way you were post pandemic, or not? Can't wait to. Can't wait to. That's what I'm Cannot saying. Cannot wait to get on a. Xerxes, how That's do I replace it. having a whiskey with you? I Correct. can't replace right? that, right? That was my thing. I, that I, I, I need that. that. Those are relationships. Those are relationships yeah. that you, you know. Human interfaces have this relationship because of that relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I mean. That it will call come back eventually. It has hundred percent. Yeah, we all are also of us are tired. We want to get into those crowded airports and those crowded planes and travel to the place. And I want to smell Bombay. Yeah, yeah. I smell be... Bombay for so long. Yeah, yeah. Well, our noses are blocked right now, thanks to the pollution. So it's not much to say. <laughs> so, David, that's my next question. Actually, you answered. I know for a fact that. You know, people like you or people, highly successful businessmen have very little time for their families because of their tight schedules, their commitments, their social obligations. And but this I've always said it, I've said it to my kids, I've said it to my family. I've always brought your example up that you I recall you telling me stories of how you have actually flown once from Basel to Dubai to attend your daughter's concert and fly back the next day. I recall that story and I recall that you always made time for your family which is a rarity, even I can't do it with my small business. So how do you manage it with, with all the, how do you, it's a very important thing in today's day and age. So, so you know, uh, I, anyone who says they don't have time for their family, it's, it's an excuse. 
Okay, I and I'm being a little harsh out here. No, no, you um, should be. We say that you know I spend quality time with my family. I I absolutely call bullshit on that because any time you spend with your family is quality time, not only one hour. If I spend twenty four hours, it's quality. Any amount of time you spend with the family is quality time. So uh, you have to find a balance. And when you decide that family is is important, then you have to allocate that amount of time to that activity, if you may call it that. Uh, I I see family as the as the simplest of simplest investments that you can make. It's a guaranteed return. It's an investment with guaranteed guaranteed return. No <laughs> question asked. The more you put in, the more you get back. You cannot make no deposits and expect a return. You are not going to get that. True. So you True. make a deposit, you get a return. You make a bigger deposit, you get a bigger return. That's how simple it is. I still did my business, but I spent three months of summer with my family every year out of Dubai, doing what they wanted. I may have got up at five o'clock in the morning because I was in the west coast of, of the USA to deal with the business part. But when my young kids woke up at 10 in the morning, uh, wanted breakfast and wanted to do stuff, I had done with my work. My work was done. And, and so I, that's what I did for 20 years. Even when you started Freight Systems? Even that time? Most, and... more, so, more so when I started Freight Systems because I traveled so much. But for the summer time when the kids are off school, we just hung out as a family. We just went and spent three months together. We did road trips that were eight and 10 hours. That doesn't mean we didn't fight in the car. Oh, hell, we fought. But we fought with each other. We listened to music. We loved each other. Everything was together for the three months. So you have, to, you have to find a balance, right? And, and it's, it's uh, anybody who says, I am too busy and I just can't. I call bullshit on that. Yeah, true, true. Family comes first. That is, what is this all for? There you go. Exactly. You don't make a deposit. You're not going to get a return. So, so David, my last last question before you open up the chat. Next gen looks upon you, and as you rightly said, you are a Santa Cruz boy, simple Santa Cruz boy. Next gen looks up to you, who made it big, you know, with with nothing practically. Right. So, right. what is your advice to them? For the next gen, for people like you who come from very humble middle class backgrounds or are job oriented, not from a business family. And what would you, would you be also willing to mentor them in the future? For people, I'm only talking from our industry's perspective. So, you know, I, 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 I think very deeply about the next gen. And I try to uh, understand uh, what are the problems that they face that we did not face or face. How do we eliminate those barriers? How do we make them? So one thing for certain, the next generation is going to be smarter than us. Accept oh, they are, it. Accept yeah. it. Okay. And, and uh, some of the realizations that I came up to a little disturbing for some people that I, that I was mentoring. And I was not only mentoring the young, the next generation. I was mentoring my peers. And I think to a great extent, we are to blame. Our next generation is going to depend on us for the wisdom that we hand down, not for the knowledge. Maybe the knowledge they are going to have much more than us, but for the ability for them to act within the information they have. We are sometimes barriers. Unknowingly, but we are barriers. Is it insecurity? Many a time it is. Is it, is it the, the fear that I'm going to hand over something to the next generation that I have built and they cannot handle it or deal with it the way I did? Only I can do it. Again, I call bullshit on that. It comes back to believing in the next generation, trusting the next generation, and telling them that you trust them. That you are better than me. Show me. But that's where I... Very true, yeah. very true. But that's what David, one thing, and I know may, I may be ruffling a few feathers when I say this, but the young generation does not seem to have the hunger that we all had. Even I came from, a, I'm a second generation businessman, but I had tremendous hunger, still have, 
But the younger generation, I noticed, does not want to take stress. That's their biggest word. That we, I don't want the stress, man. That's that's what they keep saying. They don't want to go the extra mile. They don't want to uh, take any nonsense. We took a lot of, uh, pardon the French, also the shit in our time. From uh, but and we had that, that. That's what honed our skills. You know, made us what we are today. Whatever we have, but they don't want anything to do with it from day one. You know, you know I think. Xerxes, uh, there are things to be said on both sides. Okay, you cannot, for example, replace the wisdom that our generation has, and that's only gained over years of going through good times, bad times, challenges, barriers, finding solutions, and we lend that that wisdom back to help them make better decisions without the time spent that we did. Uh, but 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 having said that, we have to also accept the fact that when a kid comes to you and says, "I don't need the stress, I don't I don't need to go through all of this," they may mean something else. So my response to them is, "Who's asking you to be stressed out?" But you cannot not ask me to have a measurement. If you can deliver something that is supposed to be delivered. And not be stressed out. You're better than me, man. Perfect. I don't have a yeah. problem. But you cannot say that I do not want to be stressed, but do not ask me for a measurement. That is not on. That is not on. That is what you we are have to deliver. Yes. There has to be a measurement, and that measurement has to be what is acceptable. If you can deliver that, that's fine. You may do things much smarter than I ever will, and that's good. Maybe I'll learn from you. So, Great. I think the next generation has a better balance in life than we did. So, uh, you know, we went to office and spent so many hours. Today, you can do things and have a balanced life. Right. It feeds into being happy. If you don't forget about that, you will find things that interest you. Be it painting, right. be it playing golf like I do, or drinking wine like I do also. That comes from my golden <laughs> heritage. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, but it, you cannot do anything in excess. Yeah, you have to yeah. have a balance in life. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. True. Thank you very much, David. It's been very insightful. You're all encompassing life. There are many successful people in this world, but very few people who are successful in all facets of their life. So truly, truly, uh, uh, thank you. A heartfelt thanks. And thank I hope you. Thank you. Our audience thank has also so. provided the same from you. So this ends my session with you. I invite our guests to put any questions they have in the chat box before I hand it over to our president to take it further. So if anyone has anything, I will also request our president to be unmuted. Uh, while people post, let me ask David two simple questions. You did the heavy lifting and uh, hard questions. I'll put two simple questions. Uh, David, uh, you are in this sense an uh, Indian multinational, and you also have good exposure in IT. As I know that your competitors also use your software. So you have been able to have competition also happening along with competition is competition and cooperation. So I want to response it from you and the background is you are in a global hub like Dubai. You also are in Fiata, which gives you a global strategic perspective. So two things I want to know from you is where will be our industry, our role, our individual roles as the owner, CEO, our role as a freight forwarder, as a logistics company, five years from now and 10 years from now, factoring the digitization that's happening. And once we are through, then I want to have a second question on family business with you. By that time, I would appeal to everyone to post their questions in chat. And we can have open house later on, but please put formal questions to David there. David, am I clear with my questions? You're, you're, you're clear, you're clear, you're clear, Shantanu, and I'll 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 try and respond in in the best way I can. 
And, and uh, one of my first responses is, uh, you know, as a company, every time we talk about, you know, getting big contracts and, and getting big businesses, uh, we talk about Fortune 500. And we talk about the bigger companies that fall under those categories that, that uh, you know, uh, uh, embrace technology and ask people like us or companies like us to walk halfway down the road from a technology standpoint to integrate with their systems and to make things seamless. The world is not made up of Fortune 500 companies. What about the other 5 million companies that actually do day-to-day -day business? 80% of them are small business in, uh, uh, units that need people to look after them, not systems. And uh, whilst a lot of what we do today will get digitalized and automated, what technology is going to do is going to give the smaller players in our industry an ability that the big players have. We have not embraced that in the past, but you go back to my relationship point that I made. I started this business because someone believed in me. He was the CEO of a very big company and he says, David, I cannot do this without you because I know you. So a lot of our business with our, our own customers are because of relationships we have. Those relationships are business relationships. They're not personal relationships. Personal relationships do happen, but as a going to give us the ability to provide a value David, to our uh, customers. Can you repeat? Because I think you had a connection problem. Please no, David, last one minute. David, do you have any chance two devices on? No, I don't. I don't. Okay, because Am I echoing? Am I yeah, echoing? Yeah. Yes. So maybe you have two devices on. That's what happens no. normally. No, I don't. I'm echoing, is it? Little bit. Oh, uh, I don't have. I don't have two devices on. So is it? Is no, it's it... much better. No, it's much better. Okay. So Shantanu, what I was saying is that, you know, the the business that we are in is 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 a relationship based business. Uh, it's not only about technology that we are going to embrace as an industry. It has to be mirrored by our customer who is able to accept it, receive it, and use it. it there's a long, long way. And in being in Dubai allows me to see a lot of the trade business that goes on. They will not deal with a computer. They will not file a shipping bill. They will not file the shipping instruction online. They want that personal. So there's going to be a long, long time before I think this ever happens. But there's always going to be 80% of the business run by small units that want to talk to Shantanu at the other end of a phone that want to hear the voice and say that, listen, I have a problem. What can you do for me? When you have a problem, your system is not going to help you. You need a person to solve your problem. So technology will play a big role. But like I said, our industry has no option but to embrace technology. And with the embracing of technology, our industry is going to still provide services on another level even before they had technology. We, pr we provided a service with no technology. We will now have an enhanced way to provide services. But the relationship with the customer is not going to change. So the smaller players in our industry will have an ability for the connections and relationships they have to provide a service that even the big boys in our industry have. That technology is going to do that. It's going to integrate the playing field. I think it's a strong statement, and I hope you are right, and what people are writing is not correct, and uh, maybe people like us still have good chance. 
second question i think i will also start with the uh, what our immediate past president nilesh has posted he wants you to take responsibility as a brand ambassador of family business so maybe you accept that as a brand ambassador of family business of our industry and amtoy in particular now you have two children and you have a family business and you will also have third generation coming i think it's amazing that your son preferred to quit commodity and finance market which is so glamorous and come to our industry that is also inspiring i think these are two three things we will like to hear from you about next generation taking over how you are planning and or how will you make it appear unplanned and yet steer the way you want to have things to be so i had i had uh, i was fortunate to uh, to attend a family business uh, uh conclave of two days uh uh in uh, one of the prime premier management schools the isb in hyderabad and it was a two day family business uh, convention and the reason i attended it was i wanted to know whether i was doing the i now know that my kid my son's coming in and my daughter's going to come in am i doing things right i wanted to learn and we had uh, adi godrej we had mithals we had ready both generations telling their story the next gen who's taking over and the generation that's handing over and their stories were amazing right but the essence of every story was about how difficult it was from the next generation taking over from my dad was very difficult and i am sitting there in the audience saying that it is the one of the easiest things for me was handing down to my son because i was super eager to to impart my knowledge so that he becomes a much better forwarder and logistician than i am so there was an urgency in my mind to do that and i was very happy to do that and everything that i heard i think somebody else is mic must be not muted that is recur- uh, uh, reverberating oh, i have muted all i don't think there's anyone else's mic they can't unmute even if they want to except right. you shantanu and me okay so okay. something is wrong maybe if you can remove your microphone maybe your your earphones possibly and plug it out from Take the laptop out. is this can you is this better now i think it's the same i don't know i can't the... hear any of you no no put it in put it in can anybody put hear it. me yeah we can hear you that's not working we can I hear think you i have to go back to this yeah am i am i audible can you guys hear, hear yeah, me yeah pretty much now we can hear you it's much better okay so i was sitting in this audience listening to all the problems these very big industrial families had in succession planning and handing over and uh, i'm sitting there and saying i don't have a problem and it bothered me it bothered me so that night i didn't sleep very much i said am i missing something and next morning i was having a breakfast i joined the table where uh, one of these one of the professors who actually is a consultant to family businesses and gets involved when there's a problem and acts as a counselor or a bridging person to make things work from a successful succession perception and i said you know i i i not able to understand this and i I'm, i'm really concerned and then the next evening whilst i was having dinner i i realized that maybe i have the solution and the solution to me was communication that i do not have a communication gap with my son he knows more about me than even my wife and that is simply because i played golf with him 3 times a week 
and I spent five hours each of those three times playing golf and talking. Now you try to keep a teenager quiet, no chance in hell. So, and then I went to the, I said, Professor, I got the answer. The answer is golf. So what? So the answer is golf. And he says, can you tell your story? And I told my story. So bottom line is communication and trust. Between the first and the next generation. Between the first and the next generation. And here lies the responsibility for us. We are the dads. We have to make that first move. Our kids are, do not have the luxury of doing that, particularly in an Asian and Indian background. He's my dad. You know, how are we going to bridge that gap? If we don't. There's a very much structure, yeah. Do not expect a smooth transition. I, we had a young kid out there who said, when, 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 when you got involved, Professor, and you came, you told me about a business that I never knew we had. My dad had not communicated with me that we owned that business. And I'm supposed to take over. How is it ever possible to have an efficient and successful succession without successful communication? And trust. Also, at times, David, if I can interrupt, uh, is that there is also a lot of reluctance on the first generation to hand over control while they are there to their second gen. They have built the business up from ground. They have a sense of passion and ownership, which is unparalleled and uncomparable to you taking over as the second generation. It's their baby. They want to hand. They are going to hand over. They're reluctant to hand over that baby. Do you know what the reference made by that professor was to, to, to explain the level of reluctance? He says it is greater than you having a mistress. And when you have a mistress, it is out of bounds for everybody. Correct. He says that's the only equation that I can make you guys sit up and think how important this is. That if you don't, don't expect a successful transition. Because I am so proud of my business. I built it. Nobody can handle it like me. Nobody. Bullshit. There's always someone smarter than you. And what's the harm in telling your own kids, I am so proud of you. You are smarter than me. You're going to do a better job than me. Correct. Correct. Very easy to say that. I don't believe in you. You're not going to do a good job. That's the worst thing to say ever. Very true. Very true. We have one more question from Tushar Bhai, and um, then I'll hand it over to our president again. Uh, you have become an entrepreneur from a professional. What is the one single most important message you will have for the professional who wishes to become an entrepreneur? I think we touched upon it briefly during my session with you as well. Uh, I have one piece of advice, and that comes back to understanding your own limitations. If I was put in an operations job, my own company would sack me tomorrow morning. I have certain strengths. I've got to recognize that. More important, I've got to recognize my weaknesses and make sure I get people who are really good at that. And trust them to, to do what they're supposed to do. Believe in them and give them the respect that they require they, for what they do. I cannot do everything. I cannot do everything. Yes, I have a big company. The people built it. I only had an idea. They implemented that idea because they had the skill sets to do it. I did not have the skill sets. So Choosing my advice to them is do not be afraid to surround yourself with people better than you. Smarter than you. Better than you. Smarter than you. Surround yourself with them. They will make you look smart. I am not smart. They make me look smart. True. That is my one advice. Worth in gold. Uh, Mr. President, I have requested unmute you because the echo was, I think, coming from your end. So go ahead, sir, please. We are, we are done, I think. No more, no more questions. So, David, uh, thanks for sharing. And uh, it was a big learning. You are in two sense, I think, now 
a multinational, but now as Nailesh has appointed you, you are a brand ambassador of family business in our industry. I think you are doing a wonderful job in Fiata also, and we would like you as a leader in Fiata as a second Indian to take over the presidency of Fiata. And I know you work very closely with Dubai government. So maybe you also become a Sheikh, David Philip, and get a title in Dubai, like they are recognizing Indians a lot for their contribution. And I know they engage with you for transformation of Dubai logistics sector during COVID period so that they can rely more on cargo logistics and have some, I think, uh, gap they have because of tourism made up from logistics. So all this is very inspiring. If you have some 10, 15 minutes time, I think we can open for open house and with thanking you again. And I think I want to share one secret before I close down. David is a excellent host. If you are in Dubai or in Mumbai, wherever he is, catch up on him. He will take you to the best restaurant, offer you the best drinks, serve you the best food. And David is an outstanding host. You could not miss on this opportunity. I welcome, second. welcome. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Anytime, anytime. I second. It's about people. It's about relationships. I love exactly. people. I love hanging out. Exactly. So thanks, David, and uh, the sis, you can have open house now. For yeah, so I'm, I'm just uh, stop the David, you have time, I believe. No problem, no problem. Absolutely yeah, I'll no just problem. stop the recording and... Um,